I welcome all of you to the Lovers World Construction Symposium and the World Night. Today our chief guest, Honorable Dinesh Gunawadana, the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, Honorable Susil Premajantra, Minister of Education, Honorable Suryan Raghavan, State Minister, Higher Education, Professor Chitra Venikara, Chairperson of Lovers World Construction Symposium, Professor Mohan Kumarasamy, Editor in Chief, Build Environmental Project and Asset Management. Professor Yasangika Sandhanayakar, Department of Building Economics, University of Morotua, and she is the Dean. Uh, Professor Anuradha Vijayasekara, Head of Department, uh, Department of Building Economics, University of Morotua. Uh, Mr. Anisha Dharmadasa, Deputy Chairman, now local construction company. Architect Jayanta Perra, President, uh, Ch Chamber of Construction Industry. Engineer Nisan Vijayaratna, CEO and Secretary General of Chamber of Construction. Architect Rohana Pandara Hera, President of the Institute of Architects. Engineer Sari Kaluarachi, Honorary Secretary of Ceylon Institute of Builders. Mr. Ruandi Silva, Vice President, Ceylon Institute of Builders. Mr. Jayakish Tulave, Vice President, Ceylon Institute of Builders. Dr. Kanchana Pereira, President, IQSSL. Uh, Charlotte County Survey, Lalit Ratnayaka and Mr. Hushanta. Mr. Karan Alvis, Vice President and Co-Chair of the Conference. Engineer Sagar Gurwadhan, uh, Co-Chair of the Conference. Dr. Asil Karnavadhan, Engineer Asok Randhaniya, Dr. Tisa Mipe, Engineer Aranda Pereira and Mr. Chandrapal Niyamagi. Our sponsors today, uh, Kushan Kolidwapa, Managing Director of our Corporation. Mr. Uh, Mahindra Sarnapal, Managing Director of Canon Cables. Mr. Nalim Hera, Chairman, Homelands. And Lankaja Singer, General Manager, Homelands. 
ladies and gentlemen i welcome all of you to the lower work construction symposium and green building awards night ciob conduct this work construction symposium for last 10 years and it continues up to today as you know sir construction industry is one of the largest in our country we were contributing 9.6 to the gdp and there are about 1.5 million people are involved in our industry and we were our growth rate was 21 percent which is one of the top five in, in the world so therefore we can't let this industry to die or we can't hold this industry considering all these factors CIOB has done look to the industry and address addressing timely need issues. In year 2009, we brought the green building concept to Sri Lanka, which uh, reduces actually the construction industry spoils about 40 percent of the environment in our country. So to control that, so we brought green building systems into the country, uh, and also we have started South Asian Green Construction Association. This is to bring down the construction cost of ours. The lean management systems can reduce lot in construction. We conduct various seminars to add knowledge to our contractors and we also help them to sort out their problem with the government of Sri Lanka as well as their clients. So for example, today we are inaugurating our own mediation center, CIOB mediation center supported by USAID. Finally, we are the institute who had done this construction roadmap to restart the construction industry in year 2023 and year 2024. Meeting with the president was very, very successful and CIOB noted in the harm of the stopping of construction industry and president admitted the roadmap will be implemented just after the local death restructuring. Further, he has uh, he told us the JICA has promised to restart all of their projects. Simultaneously, he said when JICA start their project uh, projects, EDB and World Bank also will start their projects too. So he said by end by in September, uh, government holder projects also will be started, but not all the projects, not the white elephants to the government in Sri Lankan economy. So, but very important projects to the. Sri Lanka government will restart again. So in this roadmap, we have given him 30 important points. This addresses all the problems of Sri Lankan construction industry, the settlement of a dues to the contractor. Actually, this had been done about 75, 70, about 70 percent had been settled by now. I think within the next two, 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 three months, government can settle the balance too. So the releasing our contractors from banks, we had a lot of problems with the banks. So I think we, are, we have started that, that issue now. We are sorting out our contractors' issues with the banks. So we commenting of altered project and also the funded projects to be restarted. So he said that we are going to definitely do that. This fair distribution of work also we have discussed with him is very important because some contractors are trying to drag the whole thing. So this kind of situation, I think at least one project should be uh, handled by one contractor. The cost reduction actually, uh, President uh, told us, uh, Rohan, this is one of the major problems you all have because of the construction cost in this country. Uh, FDIs, we can't uh, ask uh, FDIs to come here. Even the BY chairman told me the construction cost is a bit of a problem, so you all should do something about it. Actually, we have even in the today's meeting, we have discussed about it. Uh, we will be definitely taking some steps towards that. Uh, cut, uh, so cutting down interest rates already is happening here. I think definitely it will further come down. Dispute resolution, as I told you, we are, star, we are inaugurating our mediation center today in this forum. Export of construction industry is one of the very, very important areas. Our contractors are trying to go overseas and work. So we can bring about two billion US dollars if we do this correctly. But the government, central bank should support our contractors to give the cross-border guarantees. If they do that, I think our contractors will go overseas and do work there. I'm happy to announce that this year too, we have received around 100 
research papers from all over the world uh, and I congratulate all the awards, award winners tonight. Also this time our institute is encouraging the contractors, manufacturers and consultants who have contributed towards the green and sustainable construction in Sri Lanka. And also I am happy to announce that we, uh, many of uh, very eminent panel have been selected, 15 of them to, uh, uh, for the awards, platinum, gold and silver categories. By year 2009, the CIOB brought the Green Building Certification System to Sri Lanka. Uh, this is as a result of that, we are appreciating all the construction companies who have supported the sustainable construction in our country. Finally, I would uh, like to thank Honorable Dinesh Kurnathan, the Prime Minister, for attending this event even though with his very busy schedule and also Honorable Susi Premjanta and Honorable Raghavan. Thank you very much, sir, being with us because it's a very important area, important industry. So I shall end by thanking the people, suppliers, contractors and material manufacturers and other sponsors for supporting us to keep the construction industry alive. Also, I would like to thank the University of Moratua, our symposium chair, Professor Chitra Velikara, Professor Yasangiga, Professor Anuradha Vidya Sekar, and the team from University of Moratua for their support. Also, my special thanks goes to our sponsors, CIOB Council members and the staff. I wish all the best for the award winners today. Thank you very much. University of Moratura is Madam. Honorable Prime Minister Dinesh Kinwardena, Honorable Minister, uh, uh, Honorable uh, Dr. Susi Premjan, Minister of Education, Honorable Dr. Suren Raghavan, State Minister of Higher Education. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm delivering this speech on behalf of Professor Chitra Vedikara, the symposium chairperson, who is unable to join with us today due to a personal reason. I'm honored to stand before you as the WCS 2023 Scientific Committee Co-Chair and Dean of the Faculty of Architecture, University of Moratua, to extend a warm welcome to you all to this fellowship and awards night of the 11th World Construction Symposium. This evening is made special by the presence of Honorable Prime Minister, Ministers, Industry Times, and Distinguished Academics. It has been three years since we, are, we were able to hold a physical event such as this to celebrate fellowships and award winners, making a success of conclusion of another World Construction Symposium. Our construction industry is facing some unprecedented challenges today. The pandemic, followed by economic crisis as well as decisions and actions of different levels, have had deep impact on the construction industry, leaving it in crisis. Halting of public sector projects, delay in payments, issues associated with project financing, price hikes, and shortage of construction materials are only few of these issues that have contributed to high level of uncertainty surrounding our industry today. It is clear that as a nation, it will take time for us to recover, and while doing so, the economy will continue to face significant challenges this year and beyond. In fact, the main back, uh, backward and forward-linked work engages that our industry has 
with many other sectors in the economy means that revival of the construction industry is a key, re key to recover of national economy as well. Of course, the government of Sri Lanka has a key role to play in taking initiatives to systematically address the problems facing the construction industry and provide a stable and long-term national policy framework that support investors and pave the way for its revival. However, finding solutions to these present problems and making our construction industry economically, environmentally and socially more sustainable and resilient requires the involvement of numerous stakeholders from industry, academia and policy level. The World Construction Symposium provides one such multi-stakeholder forum for those involved in the built environment and construction industry related research and practice to come together to share their knowledge and experience. The overarching theme of this year's symposium, Accelerating Sustainability in the Built Environment, Policies, Practices and Perspectives was therefore particularly timely in bringing together views and solutions from multiple perspectives addressing the aforementioned issues those you have uh, joined with us today uh, over two days would have been uh, able to become a part of the deliberations, creating awareness of areas related to policies, practices and perspectives for accelerating sustainability in our industry. This year marks the 11th milestone of this WCS series, which was initiated back in 2012. The success of this symposium throughout this past decade is a true testament to the partnership between Ceylon Institute of Builders and Department of Building Economics, Faculty of Architecture, University of Moratua. Throughout this remarkable journey, the World Construction Symposium has evolved into a renowned platform that brings together experts, scholars, practitioners, and industry leaders from around the globe. I hope that the research findings and discussions that unfold during last two days will not only broaden the understanding of construction industry, but will lead to creative and innovative solutions at both policy and ground level, paving the way for more sustainable and resilient future. I thank all of you who joined today and who were there with us since yesterday. I wish you all a pleasant evening. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Professor Yasami Kassandanaika, Dean, Faculty of Architecture, University of Modersworth, giving you a brief speech. Thank you very much, madam. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to keep ourselves a little entertained. Put your hands together and welcome the dancing troupe for a small dancing item.
Because I believe we have a great entertainment indeed. Because this is 11th World Construction Symposium and Green Awards Night 2023 of CIOB. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to witness the most important aspect tonight. That is, to give away the award certificates. Ladies and gentlemen, awarding of certificates of the 11th World Construction Symposium. We cordially invite to give away the prize and the certificates. Honorable Dinis Kulwadana, Prime Minister of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka. Please, sir. And we call upon Honorable Susan Prentianta, Minister of Education. And we call upon Honorable Sulan Dragavan, State Minister for Higher Education. Please, sir, be on stage. WCS uh, Council. And of course, Engineer Sagar Gurwadar of Kocha. Ladies and gentlemen, let witness the most important CIOB highly commended paper board that goes out to comparative study of work related factors affecting mental well being of male and female construction workers in Australia. Mehashi Telekon. Aparna Samaravira and Thomas Colangelo, Sharap Sharma, Jake Chilla, J.D. Zella and S.D. Garnagy. Tonight, we have best paper board. Put your hands together and welcome 
from grade two cadre quality assurance system of the demolition waste management in KC is Vijay Vikrama in Chelsea R Ramizdeen and JJ Okha. concludes the uh, paper box and up next we are moving on to the most important segment tonight indeed that is CIOB awards leadership towards sustainability in Sri Lanka construction industry the 11th WCS 2023 silver award goes up to Siam City Cement Lanka Private Limited NC Extra put your hands together ladies and gentlemen Out of this 
most important products and systems category CIO BBA Awards 2023. Platinum Awards goes out tonight to Sri Bali Constructions Private Limited. products and systems. The next platinum award is to be under Mars Engineering Private Limited.
were awarded CS2 by CETA, a top grade achievement for a mere real estate company. Becoming Homeland Skyline and Homeland's construction as its residential development arm is a major reason for us to be named Srinagar's largest residential real estate solutions provider. Homeland has also initiated the concept of resort living, something no other Sri Lankan developer has managed to achieve. Colliding luxury, innovation and architecture to construct and hand over 3,500 apartments and housing properties from Ariana Resort Apartments, Canterbury Golf Resort Apartments and Residencies, Santorini Resort Apartments and Residencies and many more urban township developments. With this, Homelands became the first real estate company in Sri Lanka to be graded CS1 by C. With this, Homelands construction rose even higher to be awarded the acclaimed CS2 grading from the Construction Industry Development Authority, the highest grading awarded by CEDA to a registered property developer for maintaining the highest standards in real estate, unlocking many skyrises worth of opportunities and possibilities. Is a masterpiece. 
Preserve its beauty while surrounding yourself in the transcendent aesthetics of your dreams. Construction Symposium's Award Scheme for Sustainability and Green Construction. Let me congratulate, in the first instance, the awardees today on this glamorous signature event. A recognition from a professional institution is very important. As one of the prime requirements for a professional institution is to uplift the professional competencies by having various programs. Therefore, I am sure that the awards you have received today will take you to new heights in your careers. As of today, Ceylon Institute of Builders conducting the 11th World Construction Symposium and happily announcing that from year 2012, to uh, 2022, they have been very successfully to hold World Construction Symposia each year, growing and expanding attendees and contributions to the betterment of Sri Lanka constructions. By the year 2018, the Ceylon Institute of Builders had reached the goal of being a prominent and colossal convention which aims to strengthen the future of the Sri Lankan construction industry. Having over 300 attendees from over 10 countries, thereby establishing as an internationally successful symposium. As you know, the industry is one of the largest having contributed 9.6% to GDP and involved 1.5 million people directly and indirectly. Ceylon Institute of Builders is one of the oldest institutes in the industry since year 1961. I am pleased to hear that this year, too, it has been received around 100 papers to the symposium and the Institute thought if of encouraging the contractors, manufacturers and consultants who has contributed toward green and sustainable construction in Sri Lanka also a highly eminent panel has selected around 20 winners in platinum, gold, silver categories. In the year 2009, the Ceylon Institute of Builders introduced Green Building Certificate System to Sri Lanka affiliated with VCA Singapore. As a result, today we are appreciating your efforts towards sustainability in various fields, organizations, projects and people 
as well as old paper presenters and award winners tonight. As a Minister of Education and my colleague, State Minister of Higher Education, Dr. Raghavan, we are taking all the steps to improve further the research culture in our university system and especially among professionals in our country. Our population is 22 million. If we maintain that standard, we must have at least 22,000 researchers in the country. But to my knowledge, it's less than 5,000. And if you further, if I further explain, so there are mainly two categories. Fundamental research and applied research. Right? It's very few engaged with applied research. I am very happy your institution paved the way for applied researchers because always your profession engaged with applied research. The construction field every day. If you go to some other countries, because we, normally we are attending some international conferences, symposiums, and regional conferences, then you find in this particular field how fast it's developing. With the application of technology, the science. So I think, I'm sure, the younger generation, by engaging research, especially the applied research, then of course you can see. So there are some veterans in this hall today. So and the institution, so they'll be very happy the way the younger generation engage with applied research. So we are in the transformation of education. It will take some time. You just can't change the systems overnight. So there can be some news items appearing in newspapers. Hmm? One report of the select committee table in the parliament. So there are how many select committee reports table in parliament? Hundreds. But the thing is, as policy makers, we have to take policy decisions considering the old aspects. Our number one priority is recovery of economy. That is number one. Now, in higher education, our state minister knows very well, we have been granted uh, some funds by various organizations. There are World Bank projects. ADB projects, JICA, then 20 fund. So all these projects were halted as a result of declaring the bankruptcy in the last year. So in the Ministry of Higher Education, so we can't find funds here. We were expecting to complete all these projects, especially the construction projects, within a certain period of time. Then what's happening? The prices of cement mm, and other essential items went down. Then the labor cost went down. Then the I don't know how to calculate the price escalation. Huh? So normally 10%, 15%, like that those days. But now the exchange rate went up from 200 to 380 official rate. Fortunately, it has come down to somewhere around 320 now. So it's fluctuating. So you can't predict. So when you prepare a project report, now see, the, with the, considering the price escalations, it's very difficult. Uncertainty. So now we are talking about sustainability. So that is why we need uh, 
symposium like this, of course, then there can be many papers touching all these main points. So, I don't know, speak at length. But once again, I thank you for inviting me to the to be the guest of honor at signature event organized by Ceylon Institute of Builders this year. Thank you very much. We extend our thanks to Honorable Law, Susil Prerajanta, Minister of Education. And ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to witness the most important organization segment supports tonight. Leadership towards sustainability in Sri Lanka and construction industry, the 11th WCS 2023. I also respectfully welcome the State Minister of Higher Education, Honorable Suren Raghavan, and of course, I invite the President of the CIOB, Dr. Rohan Karmaratna, Engineer Saleh Kalwarachi, and Vice Presidents, Bruvanti Silva, and uh, the Vice President, Jekas Tudavi, to be on stage to give away the most important organizations awards tonight. Great moments of the 11th occasion, and of course, with a small lack of uh, organizing for some time and we are here to give away the most important players in terms of industry in Sri Lanka, particularly organizations. You can imagine hundreds and hundreds of organizations and companies who are dealing and committed to just uplift this industry. But assessment is so tough, but this is how it goes as far as the CIOB Awards 2023 is concerned. The silver award goes out to Venora International Projects Private Limited. Recipients, who we have to give welcome, Swastik and Rinia Limited. Segment. The second board of war goes out to Satutu Builders Private Limited. Segment. The third gold award goes on to KD Ebert and Sons Holdings Private Limited. There are three recipients tonight, ladies and gentlemen, of the organization's category. This program, Homelands Skyline Private Limited.
2023 organization segment. Platinum Awards are being distributed on stage, making the significance of their contribution towards the construction industry in Sri Lanka will assist and co collaborated by CAOB 2023 awards ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, Platinum Award goes out to Tokyo Cement Company Private Limited. Tokyo Cement Company in Lanka PX. Second, the next important platinum award recipient. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and welcome Randick Several Private Limited. Congratulations to the award recipients tonight, particularly the organizer segment, and extend our thanks to the most important dignitaries, honorable ministers on stage, and the rest of the dignitaries. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have uh, some more important events to witness on this stage, and of course, up next we call upon State Minister of uh, Higher Education, on the Surat Raghavan to address the gathering. Everyone is waiting for a drink and a dance, I think, in, I can see in the body. But that reflects what I am more interested in. I am an accidental politician, a decided academic, if I did not come to political science, I would have taken architecture, because that's my passion, maybe an expert. But when I came here, I got five minutes late, because the outside crowd, so much of traffic from Kalpiti towards uh, this point of Garadar. If you remember, if you lived in Sri Lanka, or if you ever bothered about Sri Lanka, last year we had a different crowd. Just last year one year in our calendar, and that crowd was using the democratic space in a destructive manner. But this crowd is using democracy in a constructive manner. I think young people who are there out there, whether they are couples, whether they are sisters and brothers, are claiming back the space that the state is supposed to give them. I'm a student of political science, I have little or no knowledge whatsoever about construction. So I look at these events from my permanently head, damaged head, which is a PhD, you know. Another word for PhD is permanently head damage. So you look at everything from your perspective. Now, therefore, just let me give a few of my thoughts, since I was told on my way here that I need to share some of my thoughts, because it has been also talked about, on the minister talked about the report that has come, therefore there is concerns. Sustainability as a culture. What might break the limitations of our adaptivity to an eco-friendly constructive culture? What has prevented doing so? Except for some cosmetic changes we have been satisfied ourselves so far. Cultural meaning provides not only to the building blocks of individual lives, stories, but a collective societal understanding where we live, as I mentioned, just outside of this hotel. 
shaping how people think and act. Any glass ceilings that we set up will have to be pushed in order to win back the citizens' exact aspirations. It's all 90% of the people out there are young people. People who will build with their knowledge, dreams, brain and hand yours and mothers, minds, mother, Lanka, years to come. They all look very young. I'm, I'm so happy today because last year, honestly speaking, last year at this time, I was hiding in a temple because I happened to be a politician, sit in the parliament. Like the history says, that is where we all go. Somebody told me King Balagamba also ran and hid himself in a temple. And I was in a temple last year at this time. And my son, who is in Canada, was constantly asking, are you safe? Are you safe? Are you safe? So today when I was driving, I just called my son and said, I am safe because Sri Lanka is safe, our economy is safe, our people are safe, our foreign policy is safe, and we have ministers like Honorable Dr. Susil Prem Dang who take the parliamentary democracy to the forefront of safety. And I thank you, sir, for that. I know how difficult it is. We have a vociferous minor, uh, opposition which is very good in finding faults. So that is the danger of the democracy. Anyway, I'll finish soon. This whole culture that I'm talking about of building meaning to people. When you build a house, for you, constructors and architects, it may be a house, just another building. But for the family who is occupying that, it's a story. It's, a, it's their individual story in humanity that they try to tell. Because I tell you, today is the 22nd, right? 40 years ago, my own house was burned because I happened to be a tunnel. I may speak good singer, and Udwara Chandanan Dutera, I studied singer. Udal and the name Surendra, Udal and the name of the Divya Adivar. Mang Evila was singer, Sahit, Samar, Samiti, Sabaha, and I get Vasaka Mademanisa, our Duhatari Katakarin, other than the Vasaka, Mama, Mangi, the Putsala, the Vasatra, Mangi, the Kangi. Happy. May culture of Naskal Yuti, may Sanskrit of Naskal Yuti, may Samar of Apita, Ape Anaka to make a bargain, then it will be happy. And Isa, the single, the demon, the Muslim, the Baud, the Catholic, and Nova, they have to come together as one mother, Sri Lanka's daughters and sons. And that is exactly what India is doing. 300 languages, 28 states, and I don't know how many religions but definitely 33 million gods in that country. If you don't want one, you have 33 million gods. Is the board yet? Or 330 million, right? But they are living together. They are ready to take the world. When Modi ji went to Congress this time, he very boldly said, last visit was India was the 10th economy. This visit, India is the 4th economy. And he, he said, next visit, who knows? America is the second economy, India will be the first economy. And that's the hope. Because they think as Indians, they work as Indians, they dream as Indians. I pray that tonight you will be part of that community, that the aspiration that was dashed and the citizen's voice has been converted last Monday. I thank my president for standing up of the historical location and taking leadership and leading all of us. And today, Governor of Central Bank announced that by next month, we will enter single-digit inflation. That's an absolutely good sign for you. I know I should talk too much, because the Higher Education Ministry is owing you 26 billion rupees, because your constructions are stuck, stuck and you have, we have bills from you. And I hope we can come to a settlement by, by at least a workable settlement by the end of the year. Let me finish saying this. Since I am a student of political science, I have to say this. Towards an ecological democracy. I was talking to Professor Construction of Morocco University. I asked, and also one of the companies which got awards, I asked, when are they going to build houses that can be affordable by Kandaya in, in Kanga Santore? and Lakshmi in candy plucking tea and Vyadasa in, uh, let's say, Mirisa. 
When are you going to do that? That's our challenge in front. That's the day people will, as a Theravadian Buddhist culture, people will look back and say, you gave me a house, like Buddha respected the boat. I think that's our challenge to mind. You may have your dance, you may have your music, life is all about that, but when you go back, I really ask you, take that message. When are we going to give a roof over the very most weak peripheral citizen of this country? That's our collective challenge. Therefore, I finish saying that the radical design studies focused on redirecting practices and conjunction with revived eco-socialism, focus on labor and political ideologies that citizen will be empowered. It is suggested that a political ecology design is needed now. It is no more um, design board alone. It is a conversation between us, you, us as policymakers, you as professionals, and with the citizen who is at the periphery. I wish you tonight a great success and also one more step towards Mother Lanka's claiming her position in the history and in Asia. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The speech itself, an inspiration, sir. That was Professor Dogman, the State Minister of Higher Education. He stands for something pretty much towards the topic today, that is leadership towards sustainability. And that was so encouraging to listen to his inspiring speech. Thank you, sir, once again, on behalf of the organizations. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm next we are here to give you some entertainment segment for you tonight. Would you have seen the welcome the dancing troupe right now on stage?
entertainment that matters pretty much. I'm sure that we are pretty much entertained with that performance in the dance plus the trumpets on this particular important organization's effort to give away the 2023 awards, the Levant Award Construction Symposium and Green Awards tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Well, up next, we are here to bring in the inauguration of CIOP Mediation Center. Indeed, so we call upon Professor Mohan Kumar Swami, the Editor-in-Chief the Built Environment Project and Asset Management, and we call upon Southern Nicola Director, USAID EEJ Project. The inauguration of CIOP Mediation Center. And we call upon the chairman of CAOB as well to execute the inauguration of CAOB Mediation Center tonight. <coughs> Ceylon Institute of Builders, CAOB, is constantly striving to voice the most important uh, aspects towards the right kind of uh, Targets. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is how we have been doing all throughout this uh, effort since the inception of this important organization, CIOB. So, the 11th important uh, award ceremony, the leadership towards sustainability in Sri Lanka, construction industry, the WCS 2023 is what we are witnessing at this organization. And in the meantime, as I mentioned, it's time for us to witness the inauguration of CIOB Mediation Center. And uh, we call upon Professor Mohan Kumar Swami, the editor in chief of Built Environment Project and Asset Management, and Sandy Gurdilika, USAID EAG Project. And we extend our thanks to the most important personalities who have given the inauguration of Syria. Ceylon Institute of Builders, CIOB, the 11th Award Construction Symposium and Green Awards 2023. Up next, we are here to witness the presentation by Professor Anand Jayamadhan, Chairman of the Evaluation Committee. And ladies and gentlemen, in fact, today, on behalf of the Chairman, Secretary of the CIOB, Engineer Sanya Kumar, she will be doing the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, actually I am here really to perform an administrative task, merely to, in, in response to a request made by Professor Jayavadhan, who is not here due to his in his post, as well as Professor Jitravedi Karan. What you see here is the panel of evaluators, the judges, who took the decision on the assessment 
of the recipients of the awards that you see today. Professor Anand Jayavadana was the chairman, and he was the person who meticulously figured out the evaluation criteria, which was based on the application that was drafted by Dr. Asha Nasmohan. Dr. Asha Nasmohan also is not in Sri Lanka, he is in UK. And Professor Chitra Vedikara, due to a very serious personal commitment, she is unable to be here. The only judge I can present at this moment, apart from me being here, is Dr. Krishna Mipe. If you don't mind, please, Doctor, just rise and be recognized. And I assure you, as Dr. Anjayavadana mentioned to me, over 43 applicants who were there, only 19 were shortlisted who complied with the criteria that was set out by him. And of them, those 90 were listed to platinum, gold and silver, which I also given to you. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to explain our criteria. And hopefully, next year, we believe that there would be a lot more applicants and a lot more awards which we can recognize from the industry. Thank you. <laughs> the Dr. Raghavan, who is here with us, a top professional who is in the cabinet, the rare choice of the current cabinet. I Engineering 
Roshan Pereira, who possesses uh, extensive experience in solar PV in Sri Lanka, has contributed to the installation of over 140 megawatts of solar projects in Sri Lanka. Roshan has worked for many renowned organizations in Sri Lanka and New Zealand. Put your hands together and welcome engineer Roshan Pereira. Good evening, everyone. So, first of all, thank you, uh, CIUB, for giving us this opportunity to present our profile and what we do. I won't take much of your time. So, Haley Solar is the renewable energy arm of uh, Haley's Fentons. Fentons Limited is a fully owned subsidiary of the Haley's group of companies, which is the largest conglomerate in Sri Lanka. And we come under the projects and engineering sector of the Haley's group of companies. And Haley's Fentons has been, you know, recognized many times, just like today, as the industry leader in almost all the segments that we work in. So we are a EM1 seal accredited company with uh, many ISO certifications that we practice. Haley's Fentons has uh, many segments, that is mainly MEP, the complete mechanical, electrical and plumbing of high-rise buildings and uh, factories and so forth. And then we have our ICT division which works on the PAV access, networking and all. Then the CCTV and access control division which work on stru uh, structured cabling, ELV solutions and all. Then we also have other uh, renewable energy arm which is the solar power mainly. Then we have the UPS division which works on uh, UPS solutions and all these segments we are the market leader in when it comes to giving you solutions. And Haley's Fentons is a 102 year old company, one of the, if not the oldest engineering company in Sri Lanka. And we employ all, over 1000 employees right now with over 280 qualified engineers. So most, and also uh, we take pride in saying that more, uh, almost all universities we provide trainings for the technical and engineering students. When it comes to solar, we have uh, we provide the overall solutions, that is mainly the on-grid solutions, the rooftop solar. Then also, uh, during the, especially during the power crisis, we introduced the battery backup systems, that is mainly working with lithium-ion batteries, which is very durable. And also, we have the hybrid solutions, where you can reduce your electricity bill, as well as have a backup when there is a power outage. And also, today, we, uh, our uh, award we won was for the introduction of the PVDG solution, that was the, one of the first in Sri Lanka. That is for factories, when there is a power cut, to synchronize the generator with the solar system. As you might know, uh, when the power is out, our normal solar systems have to switch off due to the safety concerns of the Ceylon Institute board. So uh, we brought in uh, this technology to one of the uh, part, uh, principal sponsors here actually. And uh, for the 1500 kilowatt system during the power cut days, that system was synchronized with the solar system successfully, giving them a massive fuel saving on the uh, generator when they were running the generator. And also we uh, take pride in uh, our after-sales services. Uh, we have a very separate section and we, un without, uh, uh, you know, only considering our own installations, we uh, take care of the maintenance of any installation that has happened in Sri Lanka. When it comes to solar products, again, we boast of the best quality products that are available in the world today. Our partners are the world top three manufacturers in the world when it comes to solar panels and China uh, dominate this market. Uh, so it carries a 25 year warranty, so therefore it's very important that we select the proper panel manufacturers. And also, of course, and it's a ever evolving technology. Over the last 10 years, the panel technologies have evolved a lot. However, silicon technology is still dominate the market and uh, we bring in the latest monocrystalline per technology panels into the country. In terms of inverters also, we work with the main suppliers, again, market leaders like Huawei, SME and Solax. For our 
aluminium we work with aluminium of course and, uh, and uh, Swiss tech and uh, you might see the, the local cables we buy from the local market again sponsors are here I'll just run through some uh, installations and some profiles that we have done for you. So we are again, uh, by being a pioneer in electrical engineering, we take pride in our HD work, transform installations. We are perhaps the only solar company who can do all this work and give an end solution. So many brand names you will see uh, in Sri Lanka that we have done the installations for. And these are our after sale maintenance uh, services. Again, first uh, to bring in the professional panel cleaning equipment to Sri Lanka. These can be extended up to 8 meters. So, MS is one of our key clients. We have done over 6 megawatts for them. Then, Ellis Fabric, most of one of the largest rooftops in the country, 4.6 megawatt installation. Randix also, we have done about 5 megawatts for them. Coca-Cola, Voltai, CPL, Melva. So you see many brand names you associate in the country. We have done uh, systems for them. Almost all uh, cable suppliers, ACL, Sierra, Calvi cables are our clients. Almost all the banks across the country, we have done about 150 branches island-wide. So our presence is island-wide. Anywhere in the country, we do the installations. Some ground mounted systems also we have done for LAF and Mudulanka PSC. And also, not, we are not restricted to the large scale installations, we do the domestic installations also, uh, island wide. We, uh, in the solar division alone, we have about 60 engineers located island wide, uh, giving you services as well as the necessary state sales staff. So, this is the, uh, the other one today we want the energy net, the lithium battery system, which was really a very, very popular installation and during the power cuts and still continue to be. So, very soon you will see some uh, uh, advertising with us and uh, we are very proud to say that we will be installing one of the largest battery systems in Sri Lanka. Our project is due to be completed by December. A 2 megawatt tower, a 2000 kilowatt tower battery solution, similar containerized solution uh, with lithium ion batteries with over 10,000 cycles. We have signed up and we have received the advance payment and the work is ongoing at the moment. So this will be a trademark project for Sri Lanka because this is the future battery systems. Because most of the time the solar systems, one of the main complaints has been the unavailability or inability to store power that is being generated and also the fluctuations when the power, uh, cloud power is coming. So the solution is here. So one, once this is installed, we will demonstrate that for any large scale installations, these are plug and play solutions, uh, which will really take the uh, industry to the next level. So we brought in the small scale lithium batteries, that is for the houses. We have the complete solutions for you. Again, for the commercial sector, for the banks and all, we have the perfect solutions. We install many for the ATM uh, machines uh, when there were power cuts and all, and it's still in operation. And most of the time now they don't want the electricity board power. They run on its own. And also a key project that we carried out was the dialogue. So for dialogue, uh, for 1,000 towers, we installed solar pa panels to power the towers uh, during uh, the daytime. So they are full consumption as well as the electricity bills have significantly reduced as uh, dialogue have over 5 megawatt of installations with us. Right. So these kind of innovative solutions and the latest technology we take pride in bringing to the market. And I'm sure with this large scale 2 megawatt hour battery solutions that will happen in December, uh, we will take Sri Lanka to the next level. Thank you very much.
um, natural leather garment manufacturer located in Katanaika. We work together with Haley Solar, and they're planning their proposal, and their execution was very good. We were very happy with the services and uh, completed their program on time, and the service package and everything is all very good. When we think of this important organization, CIOB, there are many important current players. If you take from the inception from 1961, indeed, we had many of the most remarkable personalities who really committed themselves to bring about that important aspects of the CIOB, the way that we are enjoying today. So it's time for us to recognize recognize and uh, in recognition of the lady panel members to pay our tributary salute. So ladies and gentlemen, to make a citation, I call upon Dr. Father Engineer Shahi Alwarachi at this occasion. solemn moment, we wish to recognize three active members of our council who are no longer with us. May I read the citation on behalf of four, all three of them, and we would uh, make a presentation of a plaque to their family members who are here in loving memory of these council members. A life so beautifully lived deserves to be beautifully remembered. Your grace, kindness and love will forever echo in the hearts you touched. Though your presence is missed, your spirit lives on, bringing warmth, light and comfort to those who cherish your memory. Your life was a blessing. Your memory of treasure, love beyond words, missed beyond measure. With heartfelt sympathy, committee members of Ceylon Institute of Builders. Could I invite uh, Dr. Ramka Naratna to the stage? Thank you for 
for your patience. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to invite Edri Shahi Kalwaraji to deliver a lot of thanks on this occasion. Coming to the last event of the day, I think it's uh, customary for to take a few minutes, although it may probably not be the most uh, expected lengthy event for the day. We need to recognize our invitees who are here with us, Honorable Dinesh Gunawadana, Prime Minister of Sri Lanka. Honorable Susil Premjanta, Minister of Education, and Honorable Surin Raghavan, State Minister for Higher Education, who are here with us for the event. In abs her absence, Prabhupada Jaitra Vedikar, whom we all know is unable to be here today due to a major commitment in her family. Professor Mohan Kumara Swami, Editor in Chief, Built Environment Project and Asset Management. Professor Yasongika Sadhanayaga, Dean of the Department of Economic Department of Architecture, Faculty of Architecture, University of Moratua, Dr. Anuradha Vijay Sekara of the Department, Department of Building Economics, University of Moratua, Professor Anuradha, who were with us in our academic exercise of the World Construction Symposium. We could also mention the assistance we got from the Navaloka group, Mr. Anisha Dharmadasa, who made his auditorium and all the facilities available at the Navaloka Center to conduct our online conference. Head of Chairman of uh, Chamber of Construction, although he is not here, Arctic Jayanta Pereira, who is also who's represented here by Engineer Nisanka Vijayaratna, CEO of uh, Secretary General of the Chamber of Construction. Mr. Rohan Bandar Hera, President of the Institute of Architect. Particularly, who is here with the President of the Institute of uh, Quality Surveys. But I'm, I'm sorry, I missed your name. And also the president elect of Institute of Architects here. We will also recognize all our council members, whom I will take a minute to mention, who were a strength to us in getting this event organized and bringing it to this status that we are today. Mr. Ruan Silla, Mr. Jayati Stulal, Mr. Kanan Alvis, Mr. Sagar Gunawadhan, particularly we mentioned. An event of this nature is not possible without the help of the sponsors who provide us the funding to proceed with such activity. In our efforts to conduct this seminar, our platinum sponsor was Oral Cooperation. We had gold sponsors, Aaron Cables, Homeland Skyline, Harris Fenton's, Insi Cement. Silver sponsors, Tokyo Cement Group, Alumix, Sierra, and Swistec. And the industry sponsors, Venora, Fridge Engineering, Satuta Builders, Navalok, as I mentioned, Sunken Construction, Sri Bali Construction, and AKK Engineering. I believe I have just done justice to them in mentioning their names, but their help goes beyond mention, without which this event wouldn't have been 
they are really. It would have been a reality. So thank you very much, all of you, all you gentlemen and ladies who are here with us to celebrate the AWOS night as well as in support of our World Construction Symposium which the CIOB has been conducting the last 11 years. It brings recognition to Sri Lanka and I would make a broad expression of appreciation to Morocco University for being with us for the last 11 years. Thank you very much. Thank you one and all. It's time for us to make a very important uh, entertainment segment to witness right now. So put your hands together and welcome the dancing troupe for that important dancing entertainment segment. of this important award ceremony that is leadership towards sustainability green awards night 2023 of uh, CIOB and uh, though the segments by segment program is over now I invite you all 
just to turn your head and look back that side for a while. And that is the value we are going to walk after this important. So we invite all of you just to comfortably get out of your seats and make your way for the dinner. Thank you very much for your participation. Yeah.